So I think it's fair to say that Custom Packs is both the best and the worst game mode in Super Auto Pets. It's the best because you have complete freedom of choice. There are probably 250 plus pets in the game at this point. And you can take any of them and you can mix and match to your heart's content and create builds that are otherwise impossible in the other static packs. I guess some of them are possible in weeklies if you get exactly the pets that you want, but uh, you might have to wait quite a while for them to come around. And for players like me, veterans of the game that have been playing for a long, long time, uh, playing many, many hours per week, probably too many, it's kind of like a uh, a playground where you can come up with unique stuff that people have never seen before. Um, it's it's really like the endless mode. It's almost like an endless mode really, isn't it? Because every time they add new pets, the number of possible builds and synergies just multiplies up and it keeps climbing. And there, there are always uh, new things to discover, new interactions. And they're always changing uh, game mechanics as well, which, which has an effect too. However, Custom Packs is probably the worst mode in the game because a lot of people don't see it that way. <laughs> a lot of people just want to win. And I mean, I guess that's an understandable point of view. However, it does mean that what should be the best mode in the game is often the worst. and. Um, you can see here in a, a perfect example of it where I'm getting matched with a, a lionfish pteranodon team and some of these players you know I can recognize this person's name I've seen them I've matched with them hundreds of times and they're almost always playing whatever is the best available and you could probably argue that there are a lot of people out there who are trying to make unusual combos work and it's just that when you get to the late game, all the unusual teams have been uh, crushed by the meta teams. However, I think that's probably a little bit unrealistic. I would say that the vast majority of players uh, in custom packs are just playing to win. And so you see builds like that. We've got all of the worst defenders in the game in terms of like most toxic units, T-Rex, Monkey, um, Lionfish, Pteranodon, etc, etc. Although I should highlight this team, although they do have Monkey, this build, I was desperate to, to win here and I actually get matched with Porcupine and the snake hits the Porcupine three times and we lose as a result. I think I could have won that in quite a few uh, different permutations. But essentially here, I, I wanted to do a build which had double door head ant with mushroom or maybe popcorn and the idea was that I was going to have white tiger at the front which is one of the least played units in customs these days uh, it used to be one of the strongest units in the game and it was on you know a huge percentage of teams but you almost never see it I think in the past month I've probably faced two white tiger teams in custom packs and I wanted to have white tiger at the front and then snake second and that would mean that as soon as we buy the snake, it's going to be uh, level two. And then the door head ants are just going to jump to the front and keep the snake shooting. So it seems like a fairly simple synergy that should be very uh, straightforward to get going. However, from the, those initial clips, you can see that it was just an absolute nightmare. Now, it might sound like a reasonably strong build, but there are obviously a lot of problems with it. Because we're using Doorhead Ant and we're having Snake in second position, we're relying on ordering. So we, we need the order not to be disrupted, and there are lots of ways to disrupt order in this game. Um, you've got Weakness to get rid of the 1-ups. You've got Snipes to delete the Snake. And then uh, you've got Eggplant and uh, Seahorse to change the order of pets. Although, to be honest, not a lot of people use uh, Eggplant in... Um, in customs, which is kind of strange, really, when you think about it. Um, so on top of, you know, their odds are basically stacked against you. They're, you know, you're you're going against people who are playing for the best possible teams, or at least the teams that are going to win the vast majority of the time. And then you're also hoping that you don't get matched with the slightly more atypical builds that can also destroy you because they happen to, to counter your... Um, 
your sort of mechanical team. So in this run, I get the, the early door head ant and I've already got a second one. And I'm just committing everything to getting the strawberry scaling going on both the, ant, the door heads. Now, my original build idea, I wanted to have pug in the middle. And that would mean that the pug could level up the, if it was a level three pug, it could level up the uh, snake and then the white tiger would give the remaining EXP required to get the instant level three snake. So the idea was to have level one snake that would immediately become level three. However, in a lot of games I was struggling because trying to build up multiple units from the early tiers, like if you're trying to hit both pug and multiple door head ants on the early turns, it just uh, it wasn't happening. So I decided in the end that pug was gonna get the chop and um, on the runs where I didn't get the pug, I would try and get Wolverine instead. So then if we have a level two white tiger at the front, that means that the Wolverine um, can receive uh, the level two, and then we have level three, sna uh, level two snake, level two Wolverine, instead of the instant level three snake. So I think that's one of the ways you can improve your odds if you're trying to get an odd build going in, um, in customs is to have multiple routes to go down. And I'm a very, very stubborn player. I mean, I'm sure people can tell that from <laughs> watching a lot of the gameplay. And I spent a very long time on this initially, just trying to use Pug, um, always going for the exact same build over and over, and then getting demolished at the end, uh, like you saw at the beginning of this video. And then I decided, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try and shake things up. We'll maybe go for Wolverine sometimes instead. Um, and that wasn't working either. You know, you're, you're getting to the end, you're looking for three tier six units. You're looking for White Tiger, Snake and Wolverine. And so they're all gonna have very weak stats when you bring them in initially. And that wasn't working either. I think there were some clips at the beginning there where I had Wolverine instead of Pug. Probably more clips with Wolverine than Pug. And then we also need to find a mushroom at the end because we want both door head ants to be uh, respawning in front of the snake. I mean, the build lives and dies based on how many times the snake is able to fire. And so we want the door head ants to have high stats so they can potentially attack multiple times. But then also adding the one up will give an extra snake snipe per door, door head ant. So, I mean, you're trying to optimize as best as possible, especially when you're using uh, some of the weaker units. I don't think Doorhead Ant is weak for a tier two, but when you're carrying it to the late game, its ability just isn't that great anymore. So actually here on the level up, I get White Tiger and Snake, which are two of the pets I'm looking for, but we're gonna take the Snake first, since it, uh, I think it works better with the team as is, and then we'll look for the White Tiger later. And as much as I've complained about uh, nasty opponents. Here's a atypical one, and this is actually someone from the Discord, Kyogre, and I'll put a link to their channel in the description. This is going for the Ghost Team Challenge. Uh, I'll link my own video about that in the description as well. Essentially, you're trying to win with tier fives and sixes only, no equipment, and as high level as possible. Uh, but back to this build, and I'm a, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a very, very stubborn player. However, having failed this so many times, I decided that I had to make more adjustments, more compromises, and generally that is the way things go in uh, custom packs. You just have to keep compromising until you get something approximating what you want. So I've got the Vulture, and as per the thumbnail, it's now in middle position, and we bring in another snake. And one of the other adaptations I made was having the Mongoose provide the temporary coconut, and that means that the front unit is likely going to get to attack twice before uh, it faints. So you can see there we got double shot from the snake, uh, before, even though it had very, very low stats. And we know the white tiger is going to have very low stats. And actually, you can see here that, that uh, we ended up beating that team, even though um, it looked like the shark was going to be too big. So we get a mammoth here. I pill it for some stats because, um, you know, we were... Uh, we had the shoe bill for a while, but we were, our scaling stopped quite some time ago. And now I'm going to bring the Vulture in, so we're going to have Front Vulture for a turn. And uh, since the White Tiger may end up only being level 1 to begin with, um, 
it's probably better to try and level up the Vulture anyway. And here's a Jellyfish team, but uh, the rest of their squad just uh, isn't uh, strong enough. And having the Vulture also contributing snipes is so important because it vastly increases your chances of clearing uh, melons and peppers, taking um, hits off of the um, uh, lemon. And you can see there, I briefly hesitated on the White Tiger because I wanted the empty space available in case I got the opportunity to buy, sell the mongoose. But I guess we're kind of committed to it now. So another jellyfish team here. I don't know, I, I forget which game it is, but there's one of these games I played against something like five jellyfish teams in a row at the end. Um, but actually here, it's working out very nicely. Uh, the snake is um, level three now because of the white tiger. And so we're doing a huge amount of damage. Now we start getting the one-ups. And um, I think I'm only going to find one one-up here. We could also buy a potato to try and protect the snake, but we're just risking it all here on one heart. And again, it's another jellyfish opponent. But in any case, it's super satisfying to see the snake destroying these, um, <laughs> these scaling teams that often plague the atypical builds. So there we go, after a lot of persistence and a little bit of compromise, we finally got the double door head ant win. So I would encourage everyone else, play those strange lineups. I want to be surprised by opposing teams. And with a bit of persistence, you can get the win in the end.